All right, now we're gonna work through the section. So the difficult thing here is uh, it's in G major, so it's a pretty good key for violin, but it's so high and it's so fast, it makes it very challenging. Uh, most of the notes here are just basically some chords, uh, some scales, and a lot of arpeggios, but because it's moving fast and it's very high up, it makes it challenging. So we're gonna begin in third position, and then we're gonna slide a half step to between the B and C from A to fourth position, and then we're gonna go to six. So the first line, we're gonna shift, do the shift. Slide C sharp, C sharp, E. So now to play. All right, so that's all in sixth position. And then in the pinky, while keeping your fingers down, you're gonna slide a half step. So we're now in the second line, slide down. This is fifth position. All right, so half step and then whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then from A to the E. And make sure it's E, B, C, G natural. You'll notice there's a little bit of space here. Remember, when you cross strings, you can't squeeze your fingers. You have to add a little bit of extra space. Right, and it's one note, grace note, and then a double stop. And then we go, we're gonna take the two, place it on the A string, and stretch to three. And then we're gonna do the shift. G, so C natural. And we're gonna go from this. This is tricky. We go from first position to three, four, five, six, six to six. All right, we could do it in just the notes. Or we could just double stop. So practice that because you essentially have to do it very quickly. That part repeats completely. Now here's when you're gonna shift at the end of the second line, A to G. You'll notice I'm keeping my fingers down and I'm shifting, I'm sliding a whole step. So, whole step. So just a, um, uh, what is this, an E. It's just a G major arpeggio that's inverted, right? So it's G, B, step and a half. So one and three, step and a half, and then between three and four is a whole step. You notice I'm keeping my one down as reference. Now same arpeggio at rehearsal O, but slightly variation on it with the rhythm pattern. Right, we'll go to first, third, first, and the reason for all that shifting is we try to avoid shifting or crossing strings on a slur, if at all possible. So then practice your shifts. Same note. Right, and then next we have G, G. We're now on to one, two, three, four, the fourth line. And then D. All right, so the end of one, two, three, end of the third line, fourth position. First, third, first. Now for those octave Bs and a regular G natural, uh, make sure you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It happens eight times. It'd be wonderful if you could do maybe a little decrescendo and then a crescendo. And then, this is tricky because I have a high one. I would practice. So this is end of one, two, three, four, end of the fourth line there. At the very end, G natural to D natural. And then I would do is a double stop. You can also do G to D by itself. Now this is tricky. The transition from D sharp and B to E, C sharp. You recycle the two, cross it over to the Asian, and then play a whole step between E and C sharp. All right, no guessing. Now we're on to one, two, three, four, five, the fifth line. Make sure it's C sharp to D. Make sure this is sixth position matching open D. In the beginning of one, two, three, four, five, the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth line is that that chromaticism makes it really difficult to find 
a G on the third bar of the fifth line. So keep your one down, make sure that it's half step, half step, half step, half step, G. Right? So it's one, two, one, two, three, four. And you'll notice that the one, it says hold down until you recycle it and then you play D, E flat. And that's really the best way to make sure that stays in tune. So the fifth line is one, two, two, three, three, four, one, two, shift to third, E flat, then C to G. Now, Technically speaking, we would not want to cross strings and use the same finger, but I found up to speed, it's easier for me to just squeeze the four over the three and then move it slightly up when I cross from. You'll notice that two, three, four are half steps. And cross over, expand, move the three over. Now this is where it gets tricky. Um, I would go to second position here, and then you're gonna stay there and squeeze all your fingers. So if you watch slowly, And then I have to expand that four because I had a low four or low three before and now I have to expand for that B natural octave. But slow motion, it's... I'm also gonna do shift. Just one step. Okay, so it's essentially a low four, expand, and you're gonna recycle the one. Okay, so that line from the B natural, move three. Shift up, squeeze, squeeze, expand, recycle the one and two, first position, half position. You, uh, I would not do one, one fast. So three, one, two, stretch your three. You're going to recycle the low one. You'll notice how my three stayed down. Okay, so you're going to go from three, one. Recycle the three to the E string, put a C sharp a half step, and then you're gonna shift. So I would do and then we'll go to first, first, third. So practice all these shifts. Then third, two, six. So where that pattern starts, first, third, third, six, crossover. You'll notice how all of that was in one sixth position. So then, step and a half to eighth position, D, F natural. So only one was up, the two stays. So make sure it's the whole step, half step. Recycle, now shift, F sharp to A, and then stretch. Right, so this is where it gets really high. Essentially, you're, you're going from Eighth position on the F sharp, right? Because E is seven, so this is F sharp is eight, and then you go to ten, A, then you shift up or you stretch to to eleventh. Okay, so uh, with the octave up or octava, octava from the F sharp, you do the shift, then D to F sharp. And make sure that that measure repeats three times. And then the second to last line, you play that four times. You'll notice how my thumb is not here. Um, I would not recommend this because then it's going to be very easy to fall off. So the octave above part happens, that measure repeats three times before you have D, E, D repeated four times. So. Those three times. Now the next part, what I would do is I would come around, have my thumb on the um, on the side of the violin, and still this part of the thumb touching the neck. Um, if you have very long fingers, you can probably get away with your thumb being um, right here on the neck. My fingers are pretty short, so I have to come around. But this position, this position is fine. And then at the very high position, you play that four times. This is the second to last line, and then you have essentially a measure of. Now, I would not shift within this measure. So this, the last measure of the second to last line is arguably the most challenging in this piece because it you shift from really high position, what is essentially 11th position, back down to first in a matter of just a few notes. 
but that measure, I would also play that entire measure on a slur down bow and then go up on B. And here, um, there's actually quite a few fingering options that you could do, not just the ones that I uh, wrote down. So the first, I will play the one that I think is the easiest for me, um, the one that is penciled in. So it's B, and then shift to F sharp. So there's a few options here. So this is the second to last line, middle of it. One, two, three, four, one. The way that it's printed, we're gonna go from what is 11th position to six. So we'll play F sharp, G, D, G in six, then to third, and then first, okay? Now the other option that I would recommend is actually come down sequentially into third. So I will play it slowly. This is 11. You're going to come down to F sharp, then D, then C sharp. All right, so let me just do that one more time. This is the alternate finger and it is not printed. You will go to. So from the B, you're going to go down to F sharp. One, two, then you're going to go down to. D, and then third, okay? So here's the one that is printed, very slow motion. One, third, first. Here's the alternate finger that I would also practice both and see which one is the most secure, uh, up to speed. line I would play essentially squeeze all your fingers because in half steps because this moves really quickly and to get it in tune this is the most secure this not might not necessarily be the best fingering option but it's definitely the most secure for me so this is the last line first I'm gonna keep my fingers down and squeeze recycle the one and now stretch the three so essentially you're in half position and then you have to stretch back to regular three and make sure that as you're going from half position on E and A string, when you get to the D, not only is it regular three after a low three, if you choose to, to play this fingering, you also have to stretch a little bit extra because D string is farther than A string. So stretch a little extra if you choose to use low three. Switch from a low three and a farther string. Okay, so the last line is Now make sure you're at the frog. Retake up. So these chords are very quick. Excuse me, they're very quick. So you're gonna play two and two quickly. So I would treat the chord as a lift. So you'll notice how I'm playing the chord two and two quickly, and I'm lifting. So the chord is the lift. So you notice how it's slow motion up at the very frog. Lift. Lift. And then lift again, right? So the chord is the beginning of the circle. It is the beginning of the lift. And whether or not you play a long bow, a detaché, a short bow, or you play a chord, again, think scratch you to make sure that your hand doesn't do this, doesn't lock up, make sure you go in you, scratch. So the last line, first, half position, stretch, retake, front, retake, three chords, then, quick. Remember that the last section of this, really the last, um, pretty much 80% of this, really from rehearsal O in the score to the end, is for T simple. Okay? So, guys, I hope this helps to really unpack this. You can play through it uh, up to a suggested tempo speed. You can play it at slow or medium slow or very slow. Um, you can write notes, experiment with fingerings. This is all are just suggestions, but I hope that you got some value out of watching this tutorial. Please consider subscribing to the channel where I'm going to explain and go over lots more music, lots more skills, lots more things. Please comment, let me know what you found helpful. Also, let me know if there's any particular skills or other music that you want me to cover in similar style tutorials. Um, and please leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.